Hey everybody! Hello, hello! It's two o'clock! How are you guys doing? It's two o'clock on a Thursday! And you know what that means! Philip Jeffries Instagram Live! I will tell you guys, it's gonna be a really good one today. We got uh, a lot of fun uh, things to talk to you about today. We have uh, uh, a guest I am super excited about. This is somebody um, who uh, you probably have been wanting to see on for a long time. You said, who is this Philip? I want to see this guy Jeffrey. Is there a Jeffrey? Is there just a Philip? Well, you're in lock, Stockholm. We got someone from Stockholm. How you doing? We got Christian Rivoli in that PJ house. And we even got Leo Bershad. So guys, we are so excited to have you in today for this exciting installment of PJ Instagram Live. Behind the Design, where we talk a little bit of design, we took a look a little bit of business, and we talk about life in this crazy new world. So uh, I wanted to share with you guys, I uh, did not wear a jacket today. I did shave for you, but I did not wear a jacket because on the headshot that was sent out, I had I wore this same shirt, so I wanted to make sure you recognize me. Is this a little bit better? You, uh, you got me now. And, uh, and there we go. So with that, Lindsay Shook, woohoo, we're glad to have you here. I am super excited to introduce our guest today. And let's see if he has arrived. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see where he is. Uh, I see him, guys. Here we go. Are you waiting for his theme song? I know I am. Here we go. Dun. song I selected for you and go way back with, to tell this story. So uh, good afternoon, big brother. Good to see you first off. Great to see you. And when I was probably about seven or eight years old, I was absolutely obsessed with Rocky Balboa. And that was right around the time that Rocky three came out. And I think I thought I was Rocky Balboa. I got thrown out of a couple friends houses for thinking that I was Rocky Balboa. And still to this day, when I work out and I need some pump up music, it will be to Rocky Three or Rocky Four soundtracks fighting against uh, Mr. T or, or Drago. So yes, that is definitely a good one. Yes, I want to share with everybody who's watching. So uh, Jeffrey, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, is not only my business partner, but also my brother. And when he was a little kid, when Rocky was uh, three, was on the show, was on the TV literally every day on HBO when it would repeat, and this kid would be watching it. And even now, Jeff, I, I think you're one of the most passionate people I know. Did Eye of the Tiger you think impact you or influence you? Did Eye of the Tiger? It, so so it, it does, and uh, still to this day, and, and I think back to something that Steve Jobs said, which is stay hungry and stay humble. And so, you know, sometimes, uh, listen, we've all had days where, where we wake up not hungry and, and Sometimes I play that song and put myself back in the Rocky mode and say, you know what? What does it take to be the best? What does it take to be the best? <clears throat> you ain't so bad, big brother. I, I, I tell you, I'm very nervous here. You know, I've been in a lot of interviews, but being interviewed by your, your brother, who's known you every single day since the day you were born and knows all of your stories. And, and, and I did wear a jacket because in the picture I had the jacket. So there you go. Well, you look fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, everyone who's watching, if you've ever had... Uh, a brother or a sister and you always wanted to put them on the spot and under the light and I'm doing it for you right now. I know. I'm, I'm like feeling like I'm at a rope. With, with... That you guys are going to see yeah. right now where I, you can you can throw out questions and, and we'll see how he handles it. Oh, I'm, God. I'm stuck with Rocky this, is getting, this is getting hot in here. Bob and leave. Okay. One other thing before I start. You know what? The Philip Jeffries mug, the famous Philip Jeffries mug went, went, went missing. I don't know if uh, the cleaning person did it. So I'm, I'm doing something new. Uh, I'm actually uh, 
uh, using one of our designer friends, Francis Interiors in New York. Francis, if you're listening, I'm drinking uh, uh, some agua out of your mug today. And if any uh, uh, audience members want us to uh, use your mug in a future uh, episode, please Insta us and we'll have someone get in touch. But again, the shout out goes to Francis. All okay. right. So now let's let's dive into it, Jeffrey. Yeah, just don't remember. I know where you live, so be careful, Aaron. <laughs> you do know where I live. <laughs> so, Jeffrey, let's talk. You know what? Uh, uh, first, um, uh, you wanted to share. I know you probably have some friends watching from all over the country, all over the world. Everybody's good and healthy in your life. How's your brother doing? Uh, big brother is doing amazing. He, it's really kind of funny. You know, he became an Instagram star, something that, that uh, I didn't even know that you had this this amazing talent yet. Here you are and, you know, giving Leno and Letterman and, uh, well, they're retired. So maybe, We even have uh, friends in Scotland watching. Hello, Scotland. So, Jeffrey, uh, but uh, uh, just to, we could share with everyone, our, our families and uh, all your extended friends are all, all, all good. A lot of, a lot of gratitude uh, involved that um, and, and health and happiness is first. Fantastic. So our heart goes out to all those that are affected, but thank God our family is okay. Great. Well, obviously, one, one of the things, obviously, we always start with is, is serious, and now let's try to make it light, kind of keep it fun, because I know in sure. this day and age, we all use a little bit of, of fun and lightness. So let me ask you, Jeffrey, I don't even know where to start. I, I send him a list of questions, guys, and it's like, do we ask him this list, which are the safe ones, or do we ask him these that aren't so safe? Hey, Michelle. Uh, so anyway, I think we should uh, get right into it, and, and maybe we'll give you uh, a little bit of an opportunity to say, what was it like? working at a family business for you when you first started. Tell us, what was it like starting at Philip Jeffries and when did you start? All right, so how, how far back am I going here? Start at the beginning. Start at the beginning. So um, I worked uh, every summer from sophomore year of high school. Every summer was in the warehouse. And then I graduated when I got to college, I spent summers in the sample department. And then I graduated to customer service. And when I was 17, dad took me to Neocon for my very first trade show. And then we went barnstorming to visit designers in Denver and San Francisco and Portland. And that was kind of my start. And then I went out and, and worked outside the business for a couple of years until uh, Philip and, and I one day uh, decided to join forces and, and come back to the business. And I'll tell you, it was uh, fun. It was great learning. But I, I don't know about you, brother, but it was a little challenging those first couple of years there. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, and we'll definitely get into that. But but tell us what it was like when you were a kid working working for dad uh, and our father Eric. Uh, if you're watching Eric, shout out to you and Susan, our mom and dad, for starting the business over 44 years ago. But what were your earliest memories? What did it feel like when you were working there? So uh, one of my earliest memories is at mom and dad's wallpaper store because mom and dad actually started out with a wallpaper store and interior design shop. And I remember being like five or six years old and uh, in the back room, my mom had a little, like where the furnace was, there's a little desk where she did bookkeeping and I was in charge of running all the credit cards. And really? So that was actually my very, very first memory. Uh, and then underneath the store, our mom and dad had, that was the original warehouse where dad would keep his stock. And the problem was there was a deli right next door to the store. And one so, day, someone... I don't know if we should say it because there's some Livingston people. I saw Annie Sonnenberg is listening. And so we got a lot of people listening. So maybe we should be careful if you say which, which deli it is in Livingston. So, so uh, um, one day, so anyway, that's where dad's uh, warehouse was. And I think Philip and I used to love, at least I can speak for myself, I used to love to go and visit dad. And even though, you know, no one thinks of their dad, you know, down in the cellar, but I thought <clears throat> his office down there was the coolest thing. And I remember um, loving and the business. And, and I remember the very first time he moved to a, a warehouse and- Well, let me uh, pause you one sec. Let me pause you one sec. Uh, you, you said you remembered loving the business. What did you love yeah. about it? So I think part of it is that uh, our mom and dad, and especially our dad was so passionate about it. Yeah. And he, he loved it. And I think, you know, I was talking to, I was telling the story earlier that we really try and have fun at Philip Jeffries uh, to, to a bunch of our new hires. And I was telling the story of where that came from that I was talking to a friend's parents once and they said, you know, if it was supposed to be fun, they wouldn't call it work. Mm -hmm. And I never felt that from our mom and dad. And, and 
You know, our dad used to come home with these amazing stories of visiting designers and visiting mills and always full of energy and passion. And I think that that trickled down to us. And I think that definitely imparted part of uh, some of our passion. Yeah. You know, uh, someone wrote the word otaku. We, we share with everyone what, th what that means. So otaku is a Japanese word. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, it, so many words from overseas don't have one exact definition. And so at Philip Jeffries, we try and put two words together that describe it. And it is passion for what you do and pride in what you create. Yeah. And so when Philip and I learned that back in, I'd say, 2003, four was when we learned about that word going to Japan. And we decided to, to bring that into our company and teach that to everyone and yeah. say, how do we have passion for what we do? And how do we be, be pr proud of it without hubris, right? Being humble, but still having immense pride in what we create. Yeah, I love and, that. And to this day, I think that's that holds true. Yes, I know. If you've been to Philip Jeffries before, we don't want you to leave the door unless you learn that word. I love it. So, Jeffrey, let me ask you a little bit about um, uh, as you've evolved, right? Because, uh, like you said, as a kid, you worked in the warehouse. I worked in the warehouse. We slept, we swept the floors. We went different directions, right? Uh, when we uh, when we went to school, uh, you and I both went to different colleges, went away from the business, then we came back in. And uh, for those who don't know, I. I'm on the sales and marketing end, and Jeffrey's on the operation end. And uh, one and of the things the, oh, and the, that I was going to say that I don't know if a lot of people know Jeffrey is that you also also head up the design department. Obviously, you get a lot of help. We have an amazing design team. But tell us a little bit about how you really got involved and involved into be part of the design element. So, so quick story that I want to tell, which is uh, I was probably about probably about like 18, 19 years old, Philip, and we went on a trip to go visit. Uh, uh, Uncle John and Aunt Carol out in, in uh, Arizona. Anyone in Arizona? And, shout out Arizona. Arizona! Arizona! And um, after about two, three days of being like 100, it was August, it was like 110 degrees, and two, three days, I was totally bored. And Dad is like, come on, you want to come with me? I'm going to go visit our showroom out here and show them some, some product. And uh, at the time, we had fabric and wallpapers and wall covering, and I was just a sidekick carrying the suitcase, and he did a great presentation. And, uh, and then afterwards, we get back in. I, I think we had like rented a big van. Do you remember this? Like one of those conversion vans, with, like four rows. So we jump in that van, it's 110 degrees. And, and dad says, oh my God, I left one of the suitcases. And he goes running back inside. And as he comes, uh, as he's inside grabbing the suitcase, I see a designer walking out with a box that said Philip Jeffries down the side that I personally had packed up. I remember packing up this box, shipping it to Arizona. So we didn't have that many orders back then. And all of a sudden, I had this immense, I was filled up in that moment. I was filled up, uh, you know, they talk about filling your cup. I was filled up and suddenly with an, an immense sense of pride um, that something that our company had created that this designer felt comfortable putting into their client's home. And I'll share with you, like today, to, even today. And that, I think you still have that same, Pat, you really do. And, yeah. I, I, and, I, and it's unbelievable. And I think it, it cascades down to the whole organization. But I want to talk about the creative element, because, um, like I said, um, you're working with uh, the whole design team. Uh, I'm a little involved, guys. I've come up with a couple. But this guy, right, uh, you're looking at has really come up with some of the most uh, amazing things we've come out with. So tell, tell us about, like, one of your favorite uh, wall coverings that you design and, and, how, and how you got involved in it. So I'll say this, which is I don't think that I'm as much of, of a designer. I certainly am not an interior designer by any means. Um, and, and I don't even think of myself so much as a product designer, but what I'm kind of good at is connecting the dots. And so we have brought in some, literally, literally the dots, and, and we have brought in some amazing people, so, some of which, you know, uh, started as interns and grew at the company, and some yeah. amazing talent that, that we've hired. And uh, so, so the creative process, my brother, my handsome uh, guest show host uh, brother is uh, very much part of the beginning of the process. We design a new product and we come up with a story. We talk about, you know, what is this story? You know, we, we might choose one particular thing and then we tell a whole story about that one person. And then if you cut the challenge for the design team becomes how do we design products around it? And uh, really what I love to do is I love to collaborate with some of our designers who might say, 
you know, what if we could do this? Or what if we could do that? And, and it reminds me back to, I think it was like 2008 or nine, and uh, our, our now creative director, but at the time she was only at the company for a year, uh, Tara and I were down in High Point looking at all these amazing nail head finishes yeah. that were offered. And she turned to me and said, gosh, I wish we could, could figure out how to do a nail head, but it's impossible to do. You know, the bleed, the, the paste will come through the back, or, you know, how can you find somebody to do it? And I think what I'm really good at is, how do I take that concept and then find through all my experiences, someone that can make it happen. And so I went back through my experiences and had visited a mill years earlier that had just been experimenting with some type of raised ink and was able to take this concept, run with it, fly down to the mill, work on the development. And that was how our rivets collection was born. Dun, dun, dun. For everybody who is familiar, I think it's become one of the a wall coverings we're probably best known for is that fabulous rivets and uh, really uh, something that uh, I think has become iconic. But so, I, I love the fact uh, that Jeffrey, seeing how you've continued to collaborate and uh, and really created something that is Angie uh, writes here that we, you kind of nailed it. Ah, I nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love that. Right, should I tell another one or should we move on? No, 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 no. Well, I'll tell you what, um, when it comes to design, let's stick with another thing, because again, this is about design. I know a lot of people out there probably know, want to know, you know, where does uh, some of these inspirations come from? And, and with that, maybe one of the things you could talk uh, a little bit about is something that I don't know if every designer knows about, which is uh, customizing, right? Because I'm hearing more and more, and I think the designers are more and more trying to make something bespoke, make something unique, but there's a lot of always headaches with it. And maybe you could talk about something that we came out with a couple of years ago. It's, it's been a big hit called the, uh, the mashup. And, and what is mashup? So, so um, mashup, I, what I want you to imagine is Philip and I as DJs at, at Coachella, and there we are, and we're mixing things up, right? And, and we're mixing different music together, going from one to another to another. And, and that to me is really what the concept of mashup is. And, and throughout the years, what we'd hear is, wow, I love this amazing palms print that you have, mm. but can I do it on a different texture? Right. Uh, or I love the, the nail dip design that you have, the, the studs and stripe one running vertically, but can I do that in square rivets instead of round rivets? And so the whole concept that we had here is how do we take something that can be bespoke, right? Without using the word custom. And, and a designer once taught me this, he said, don't use the word custom because soon as, as clients uh, and users hear the word custom, they hear 12 week lead times and they hear super expensive. And that's not what this is. It had to be just as fast as ordering the regular product and no upcharge. And so we came up with this concept where we said, what if we could take these designs we already have, be it the, the, uh, the rivets or the studs and stripes or the palms or these trellis designs that we have, but then say, if you want to do it in um, squares, you can do it in squares. If you want to do it in stripes, you can do it in stripes. If you want to change the background, you can change the background. If you want to choose a different uh, rivet color, you can choose a different rivet color. We do one-time strike off, and there's a charge for that. And then- so Basically, what you're saying is you made custom pretty easy. We try and make custom easy, and that's why we call it the mashup, mixing it yeah. together. So if you guys see, it's literally just four steps. Step one, you pick the pattern, two, you pick uh, the colors you want, three, you pick the ground, and away you go. So we tr making it fun, making it good. But you know what? I think we've been talking a lot of design. I think people want to know a little bit more about you, Jeffrey. All right, bring it on, <laughs> bring it on, here we go. All right, so I'm curious if I sh which one of these uh, questions, I should make you guys call out a number because I have, here are so many questions that are, uh, so off the wall, uh, but I think Jeffrey's son's watching, so I should probably keep them a little bit clean. Uh -oh. So Jeffrey, number one, okay. When you are not at Philip Jeffrey's, what is your favorite thing to be doing? So uh, one of my passions is coaching, and I absolutely love coaching basketball. Uh, this past year I coached soccer for my son, Max, and for the second year in a row, I coached basketball for my son, Leo. And I don't want to pat myself on the back or, or him on the back, but I will say that we've gone 22 and one in the last two seasons in basketball. 
And this is something I've been doing. We want to know why, what, what about it? Like, tell us how, how your passion comes out. That's what people want to know. Well, so first of all, I think I'm just- And then I'm gonna tell them for real what had happened. Right. So listen, I, I think I'm super competitive. Um, and so I, I think that that, yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe being your little brother, right? And so definitely the competition comes out. And um, for me though, sometimes I love the practices even more than I love the games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, when I walk into a practice, mo most, you know, dads that coach sports, I think show up at practice, they're like, all right, what should we do? Lindsay, show up thing, just to go to our heels. Oh boy, you're killing me here. Go do, go do. So, and, and that's what, of course, what our team always is. But when you get to practice, to me, you need to have a plan. And we lay out every minute of the practice from, you know, 801 to 807, we're doing a warm up. 807 to 811, we're doing this drill. 811 to 812, we're getting a water break. And so literally every single minute of that practice is planned out because they only give you a limited amount of time. And, and I just love it. And then you get to the game and you shut up and you let them do their thing. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, Jeff, I'll tell you. So everybody who's watching, you know, you have that, you've seen that one parent who is like so intense. He's like even uh, a better coach than the high school coach. We watched, uh, I had to assistant coach Jeffrey's team slap in the floor. They're going left. They're going right. He creates that passion in everything you do. And I'll tell you, you really bring it. So let me ask you, 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 you even in college, you, you were coaching little kids in basketball. I know that's your passion. How does that passion translate? What did you learn? Or what, forget about passion. What else how did you learn teaching little kids that you now bring to uh, big kids here at Phil Jeffries? Yes, and, and Francis, if you came on late, every every show we're, doing, we're showing somebody else. Your your mug is being featured. So I think here's the biggest thing, which is when I first started at Philip Jeffries, when we first started Philip Jeffries, I think we tried to do everything ourselves. And we had amazing success because it was just throwing some talented people with like incredible energy, working 15, 16 hour days at problems, at sales, at product design, at marketing. We had huge success. And then probably around like 2007, eight, we started to plateau a little bit. Mm. And, and, and that to me was when we had that real breakthrough. Mm. And we learned that the, the real breakthrough was uh, not just us doing it, but us bringing on amazing people. Right. And teaching them the fundamentals that we think are super successful, uh, that made us successful, and then getting out of the way. So let me ask you a question. I think that's so kind of like watching right now, and a lot of them have small businesses, and they want to say, hey, I want to scale my business. I want to grow it. Um, what's the step number one? What's step number one? Any designer who's watching here says, hey, Jeffrey, I'm interested in, in making my grow my business a little bit. What would you say is one of the most important things that uh, they should start with? So the first thing I would say is I'd say, uh, show me your floor plan. And so as an interior designer, I don't think you would ever start on a renovation. I don't think you would ever start on, on you know, demolishing a house and rebuilding a house without a plan, mm. right? What does the, the house look like? What is the floor plan of the house? What are the colors that you're gonna use in the house? And I think that to, is the first thing in a business as well. I, I know it is for us, which is deciding what we wanna be. And right. I think when, when you and I really took over the company from mom and dad, that's really what we did. We, we said, what do we want to not just be, but what do we want to be the best at? And for us, it was best at natural and textile and handcrafted wall coverings. So let's stop being good. Let's be the best at it. And so, so focus first, if, before you start scaling, focus and create your plan. Love it. Next question here is, let me ask you again. We got people all over. We got someone from Brazil. Shout out Brazil. Obrigado. Obrigado. But uh, if you are uh, at your business, right? Uh, things are going to uh, go good and things are going to go bad, go wrong. What's the biggest mistake you've learned, you've done, that you've learned from? What's, so, so say it again. What's the biggest mistake I've done what's in the regards mistake? to growing? You messed up, right? Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone messes up. But what's the number one that it's important, though, that you learn? Of all the mistakes, it's okay to fail. I heard, I'm reading Danny Meyer's book right now, Setting the Table, and he said uh, best lesson he ever got was from the former owner of North, uh, uh, Neiman Marcus, rather, and he said, uh, mistakes are okay, 
just learn from them. What mistake okay. have you learned from? To me, the, um, so we have an amazing blessing in working together and also it's a challenge, right? So we don't have a boss, we have a partner right? And, and who are both accountable to and responsible to. And so the who also happens to be your brother. Right? And and previous to that, I think it was also a challenge with with our dad. And so to me, the, the biggest learning was communication and um, mistakes that we made, right? Exploding when I was um, full of emotion. Mm. And uh, challenging you or dad in front of other people, not challenging an idea, but challenging you, which then exploded issues even more. And I think the biggest learning I had was when um, we learned to communicate together mm. and realize that, listen, sometimes you're gonna be angry at someone, write it down, like Abraham Lincoln used to do, write it down in a letter, put it in a drawer, look at it the next day, do I still wanna send this? Got it. So I think that's the biggest lesson I learned. Biggest lesson you learned, don't yell at your brother in front of other people. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right. So tell us, you know, Jeffrey, what's your favorite part of the business right now? And, uh, and, 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 and tell me a, a part, a role. Don't tell me uh, you love growing it or don't tell me you love, uh, uh, you know. Uh, well, can, can, I, can I tell you what thing turns me on? Are, is it clean? Is it, is it okay for Instagram Live? Probably. Probably. Right. Knowing my son is watching and probably your kids too. By the way, I love the wall behind you. What is that? This is our Kabuki suede. Ooh, suede wall. I, I can't touch it because my wife is a little OCD and she'll like, she might come in the room and start brushing it if I touch it. So yes. sorry, Marissa. I, Marissa, I if you're watching, he's touching the walls. Pretending to, pretending to. So here to me is, is the thing that, that really, I think, fills up my cup the most. Um, and so we, we talk about our great and worthy purpose, right? Inspiring a more beautiful world. And we talk about all the amazing things we do, planting trees and helping out the community, right? But it's also about creating amazing spaces. And so for me, if I actually work on a design and I'm intimately involved in, in something from concept to design, to scale, to color, and then I'm at uh, Maison, I'm at Paris Decoloff in, in Paris or uh, last year in Salone or at one of these shows and I meet some of these amazing designers and and we open it up and show them and they go oh my god that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen I remember last year in Paris uh, a year and a half ago uh, showing our flight the, the giant cranes that are embroidered oh, the, flight, the cranes yes the Whitney the editor of El Decor and he went nuts and had to take pictures of it and he's like do it three times right and and that to me is something that's so amazing. I, I still remember um, the very first time that I had that feeling, there was a, a designer who, who you obviously know very well, Philip, uh, Dan Barsanti, who came to our offices and we showed him carbonized cork. It was the first time in like 40 years anyone had ever taken a cork and figured out how to like blacken it and carbonize it. And I, I showed it to him and he was like, oh my God. And then he goes, oh my God, I hate when I get so excited over wallpaper. I love when people get excited. Do you get excited on your wall covering? We love it. We love so that, it. That turns love me you on. you get excited over wall covering. That turns me on, you know? There, and and uh, I was reading, uh, um, I was, oh, God, I was reading all night because I was so nervous about this interview. How do I come up with some new content that he doesn't know? All right, all right. Well, we're near, we're near the end. We're running out of time, Jeffrey. So last but not least, you know, uh, we have something, uh, anyone new who's watching, it's uh, the PJ Pledge. Um, and for those who's not, who aren't watching, PJ Pledge, uh, if, you place, uh, if you place an order with an, uh, a competitor and unfortunately they went out of business or a company that just can't deliver for whatever reason, we're offering a discount on the material that's comparable and free shipping. In fact, we're offering free shipping through the end of the month. And we're offering, if you need us to hold wall covering for you, then um, we can do it, no charge for that. And then you still get free shipping for up to 60 days. It expires today. What do you think? Should it go one more day? It's supposed to expire in two hours. You tell me. Well, uh, here first. So, so, so for, on for three, me, thumbs like, up or thumbs down? Let's extend one, it. Two, three, thumbs up.
So you guys heard it here live. Even the world of interiors in London, you're hearing this live. That, yes, DJ Pledge, you place an order. Guys, if you place an order, Philip Jeffries is here for you. Free shipping for another month till the end of May. Also, any uh, competitive product, if you had a problem or an issue and they couldn't deliver or the company's out of business, we'll offer you the discount. And that's now through the end of the, uh, the uh, month. End of May now, not just end of April. And we're at time, so we got to go to the rapid fire. Are you ready? Oh, boy. Here uh -oh. we go. Uh, let's get the hold, – hold on. Wait, wait. Uh A little um, Eddie Murphy there. A little Beverly Hills. Uh -huh. Here we go. Rapid fire question, Jeffrey. What is the favorite design tip that never fails? Favorite design tip that never fails. Um, cover your walls with grass plots. Everyone Whoa. loves it forever. Wall covering on every wall, grass cloth number one. And even the fifth wall, the ceiling. Fifth wall. Design tip number two. I mean, number two. What's your favorite design style? I, I definitely have a modern uh, design style. Definitely moved more in that direction over the years. Modern to contemporary. Love it. If you could have dinner with one figure in design, past, present, who would it be? Um, Peter Marino. Peter Marino. Yeah, I'd have to wear my chaps, though. I got the chaps for him. We got the chaps. All right, Jeffrey, what podcast are you listening to or watching right now? All right, so I love my podcasts. I listen to uh, podcasts every morning on the way to work, but there's no on the way to work anymore. So I've traded it in, and I'm on Masterclass right now. And I just finished this morning Doris Kearns Goodwin on Presidential Leadership. Presidential Next. Leadership Modern uh, Masterclass. Top recommended design book. Uh, top recommended design book. What do I have here? Suzanne Tassler. Suzanne Tassler is right on my Dan shelf Dan right Lynn, Hope you're well. And last but not least, most important, favorite Philip Jeffries wall covering. I'm going Metalux. Metalux. Oh, Metalux. He's ripping down oh. the horse hair. Taking the horse hair, taking the silk, and doing it up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being in here for our special installment, uh, Philip Jeffries Instagram Live, Behind the Design. Thank you, brother. Bye. We talked business. We talked about life in this crazy new world. And you got to hear Jeffrey Burchad, CEO of Philip Jeffries, on the hot seat. Great to see you. See you Tuesday. Bye. Love you. Mwah.